Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Tuesday, May 9th, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's start with a few gaming updates. First game, Star Trek Bridge Crew, which of course is launching May 30th. Super stoked for this game. What I love about it is the dynamic of both co-op, you can play with a buddy, where you each play a couple of the roles, there's four in total, or go full-on multiplayer, have one person for each of the four roles. You got to basically work together much the same way as if you play any MMOs out there, any of you, the boss battles in a massively multiplayer online game usually require multiple classes working together, using their own skills, sometimes in pairs, in triplets, or as an entire 5, 10, 20, 50 person group, which is huge. It's like they've distilled that essence of MMOs and built the game around that. I just love the idea of working together in that way. So Upload VR has had a weekly article on this, and each week they look at one of the four roles. So first one was April 25th. That looked at navigation. May 2nd looked at helm. This week's engineer and next week's the last installment is going to look at the captain position a few more weeks and it will be out all right next news bethesda five things that upload vr feels they need to do to make fallout 4 work in vr and some of these are common sense some you kind of think about it and it literally could make or break the experience first one Include lots of locomotion options, absolutely. And I have every reason to believe that is exactly what Bethesda has done given the time that they've spent working on this. I'm pretty confident we're at least gonna get two, one quasi-teleportation based, another one smooth motion based. Next one, let us use the Pip-Boy without pausing. So that kind of sounds obvious um, in the sense that, look, it's not a multiplayer game, so Sure, if you pause the world, is that really a big deal? No, but for VR and immersion, yes, it is. And I would have to agree, do not pause the game. Now, that reminded me of EverQuest when it first launched. It was so new, we forgave so much, but it was horribly buggy and broken. And I remember distinctly caster classes when you meditated, my shaman, for a spell... You sat down in a real-time game, there's no pausing, and your view would be replaced by the spell book for an agonizingly long amount of time till you memorize the spell. Now, you do that out in the wild, you were getting killed a lot, PvP, it was just, it was a horrible design choice, one that they eventually got rid of, but very much like that, yes, Pip-Boy without pausing. Cut down on load times, i.e. do not be the PlayStation 3, which... It was freaking horrible. I picked Skyrim up, uh, Bargain Basement, loved the game, preferred on PC with mods, but thought I would try it on the PC3, and man, those load times, brutal, absolutely brutal. You could almost literally make breakfast, and it's still loading when you're done. It was that bad. Let us interact using our hands, so the game uses those familiar crosshairs of the Elder Scrolls games. No, actually allow us to interact with the environment. Pick up objects, turn door handles, manipulate things, in short, use our hands. That would just do wonders for the immersion. And then the last one, probably in my opinion, the most important for longevity, give us all of the DLC and mod support. DLC to me, no-brainer, include it. Mod support, I totally understand. Existing mods are gonna probably not work and break things, uh, but most likely just not work, period. I'm not asking, and neither is the article, because I agree with them 100% on this, to have existing mod support, just the ability to create mods. The community is going to take care of the rest and create mods for VR. I have no doubt. So absolutely, hopefully, they include that ability. And then next up, just more confirmation regarding virtual reality for Battlefront 2. PlayStation VR support, this coming from Upload VR themselves, who got the newsletter and confirmed that, you know, unless it's a mistake going out to every single country, that was a legit icon, the VR support on the thumbnail. So, 
I guess the question remains, is it going to be a la the first game or are we going to get a full implementation? Hoping, hoping for full. And then next up, uh, Omnipulse pneumatic actuators that provide haptic feedback. Now, these things like the article in Road to VR says look pretty damn creepy. It's this jelly, rubbery-like substance on your Vive's handle. And yeah, I agree with the article. It looks pretty creepy. And it's fed pneumatically with this big, massive hose hanging off the end of your Vive controller. Now, I understand it's a prototype. I just don't see how they're going to pull pneumatics off with the compressed air requirements. Is it going to be canisters? You almost have to have a hose, and I just don't think that's practical. And if there's any engineers out there that have more experience than me, i.e. more than null, uh, yeah, let me know. How would you pull that off without the hose? Would it be canisters? What would you do? So they're teaming up either way with NVIDIA, and the demo that they were testing this on was the NVIDIA Funhouse demo. So each of the little events in the Funhouse game worked with that controller. And they said the haptic response itself was good, but again, my question. Next story, Sony increasing PlayStation VR production due to demand. So they finally spoken up about that. Uh, they've been pretty silent the last couple of months since indicating the million units sold. So it's nice to see them address that. Just informally doing my own poll, I check out stores around. Most of them sit empty. Best Buy, for whatever reason, seems to have one or two available most of the time. So definitely looks like there's supply chain issues but somehow it seems to be working for Best Buy, unless the two that I keep seeing there have never sold, which I find hard to believe, but it's a possibility. So that's good. They're going to be pumping those up uh, production-wise. So if there's any of you sitting on the fence uh, or wanting to get into PlayStation VR but haven't been able to find it, this is promising that a store near you should have them shortly. And next up, the trial... That just doesn't want to go away. The old ZeniMax and Oculus trial. Now, last we touched this, thankfully, it was almost two months ago. Oculus filing motion for a retrial. Well, ZeniMax now hitting back at them for the court to reject the motion. Now, they reasoned that the damages were less than the original amount that they had sought from Oculus, which was about $2 billion, close to the original $2.3 that Facebook paid to acquire. So in their statement, they say this, their motion demanding a new trial is nothing more than a disappointed litigant's imagined catalog of unfounded grievances. They are entitled to no relief. Their motion should be denied. So we'll find out probably in a couple of weeks if the court does in fact do that. Now, the next step after that's going to be interesting. If the court does toss it out, that's going to put a lot of pressure on Oculus. If they do, and there is a retrial, expect Zenibax to then fire back with some of that injunction talk. And who knows what form that would take. And the last story, guys. VR Source has a top Oculus Touch game list. Now, there were a couple shamefully absent from this. I think Elite Dangerous should have been on here. Yes, it's grindy, but you know what? I like grindy, and I love the options that it provides. And I haven't played it for about five weeks now, and I am massively jonesing for it. But some of the others on the list, I do agree with. Robo Recall should be there. Arizona Sunshine, uh, Super Hot VR, The Unspoken, The Climb. There's a couple, yeah, Fruit Ninja, VR Sports Challenge, Minecraft, Kingspray Graffiti, some done better elsewhere, some just didn't do it for me personally. But either way, check that list out, guys. It's on vrsource.com. I've got the link in the description below. All right, guys, off to do more packing. You can probably see uh, I'm not not enthusiastic. I'm just tired as hell. My old body horribly broken, my mind horribly exhausted. I just want this move to be over, and then I will be back uh, to a more pleasant incarnation of Epix 911. With that said, guys, cheers, and we will catch you tomorrow.